Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome to the sixth bonus episode of Let's Play Metro Last Lights DLC. Now that we've finished Shatria, we're moving on to the Tower Pack, which is, uh... We're not going to cover all of the Tower Pack, because it's honestly... I don't think there's enough real... interesting stuff in there to show off the entire thing. It's basically just a battle arena. I sure did pick a bad time to get wounded. All these years we've been getting ready to start rebuilding after the war. We've been collecting data while the scientists worked on their projects. And now, when everything is ready, I've got to sit it out. That's what I call rotten luck. Though the Colonel might have a mission for me even so. Files will be summoned me now. Well, let's get to business. While you recover, you'll be helping our scientists out. They're working on a combat training simulator and they ask for our help. They need a seasoned fighter to put their system to test. They'll brief you on the spot. Turn left and look at the elevator to get to their lab. Well, Captain, recover and help advance science in the meantime. Good luck. So it's fairly unclear well, brother, when this takes sure place. That mission. Well, another month and you'll be good to ride again. It's been seven years since the war ended and we've been doing what exactly? Sitting on our asses in this D6, watching events unfold. It's about time we did something, so there's not much time to rest. Because they say it's seven years after the war, but it's actually fairly ambiguous which war they're talking about. You might initially assume that they're obviously talking about the... World War III, the destruction of the surface, but there's also a, a fairly well-supported case for this being seven years after the ending of Last Light, the war between the Reds and the Nazis. Uh, either way, we're in the D6 here, and uh, we've got a mission to do, sort of. You can't go in there. It's a high danger zone. I kind of wish this guy would just say, stop, you can't go there. Get out of here, Colonel. Hello, Captain. I'm waiting for you. I am the team leader, Chukotsky. You can call me Chuk. We're working on a virtual combat simulator system codenamed the Tower. And this is my right hand man, Anastasi. He also answers to Geek. So, let's get to business. The system you are going to be testing is right here. You won't be doing anything fancy for now. Just uh, take the seat and put the goggles on. So this is pretty much the future of the Oculus Rift. Take the seat, Captain. Please. We are all set. Let's continue. He's just looking at a map of Moscow. That doesn't really help. Alright, let's get in this thing. Tell us how to use our Siam. You can choose your weapons here. Pick up a gun at the rack, Captain. So this is kind of the hub area. Please pick up a weapon. This is where you go in between missions. And uh, as you complete missions, you unlock more weapons that you can bring with you. You get to choose before every battle. Though at the beginning we only have three weapons. Well, now everything really is perfect. And we have a task prepared for you, Captain. The next mission requires you to hold out for a set period of time, Captain. I think this could be interesting. Well, Captain, let's start this. Approach the mission description and activate it. Okay, Tom. Since we're currently doing a usability test, we can't really give you any in-depth pointers, Captain. We need you to figure most of it by yourself. So we don't really get activate a lot of the mission, a Captain. choice here. This is pretty much just the first one, and they're like, hey, go do it. So one of the big things that people criticize this for is it's really goddamn hard. 
even on uh, you know non-ranger difficulties, it might actually be easier on ranger because enemies don't sponge up your bullets. So you can see here we have two waves of human enemies. However, there are actually multiple sub-waves within the waves, indicated by that yell. For getting various kills, we'll get MGR, which we can use to uh, buy more ammo and stuff in the mission. Oh, this is already going badly. So there are various doors these guys will try to open that act as spawn points for them. How did that guy die? Alright, so here's the second part of wave one. Let's uh, put some claymores down. Wow. Alright, now they're gonna start flooding out. You have a couple seconds to stop them when they try to turn those switches. I hear that siren. Alright, time to run away. So I think the reason I have difficulty with this is because there isn't a lot of parts in the main game where you really need to fight a whole bunch of guys. Since you can usually stealth through most, most of the areas where you would have to fight a lot of guys. Alright, there are some claymores deployed by default. Alright, wave two. So that right there is a spawn point. I believe it's active now. And of course it's VR, so it doesn't even have to make sense. Also, even though we uh, are doing a lot more fighting here, we still have the same ammo caps. So we have to pick up ammo pretty regularly. I found the revolver is the most useful weapon you start with here. Because you don't have enough AK ammo to really get a lot of kills with it. And the ass shot does not work from a distance. Look at this guy just laying there. I'm pretty sure I downed him, but didn't kill him. Alright, so we have... 40 MGR, but there's nothing really you can buy here except ammo. Oh, shotgun guys. That's bad. In later maps, you can actually buy AI companions. Like here we can buy ammo boxes here. Alright. We can't let these guys get too close so we're going to die horribly. Okay, Dad? I guess so. The ass shot actually works pretty well against the armored guys, even with their armor. One good blast to the face is still taken down. Have to be careful with your medkits though, because you can't get more. Okay. They're on both sides. 
kill this guy. So stop shooting me in the back. There's a shotgun guy down there somewhere. Let's see his flashlight. Where is he? There he is. How did those all miss? Well, congratulations, Captain. The first mission is complete. Oh boy, I had a lot of trouble with that the first we couple added times. A new makeshift weapon to the arsenal. You might want to take a look at it. Your next enemy is a new form of life, the Talpa Nasuta Miraculosa mutant, or as commoners call it, a Nosalis. Now you can choose a mission to your liking. So when he says that, it makes it sound like there's multiple missions, but it actually just lets you pick. There's the basic mission, and then there are modifiers such as darkness. darkness. Well, there's nothing to explain, really. You'll need your torch, though, that's for sure. That one's kind of weird for this one, because it's only half of the level, and the other half is not dark. And then there's huge, which is just way more enemies. Not actually a bigger map, though, sadly. So we get two new guns for beating that. We can switch out for uh, a bastard. I don't know why you'd want that instead of the AK, though it does have two upgrades. Or you can switch out for a four-barrel duplet. Actually, the Bastard might be better here, just because it has a slower rate of fire, and you don't have a huge ammo pool. Sadly, there's no uh, option to modify these. You have to use the mods that they come with. And you can see, you can get a pretty big selection here as you go through these, because there are a few of these. Let's just go with a basic one. See, we start with quite a few explosives, one stack of ammo, or three stacks of ammo, one purchase of ammo here that we don't have to buy, and that whole lot of Nasalis is going to come dropping in here. See, there are four waves even on the basic level. I believe there are only five on huge. It's not that many more enemies, it's just a few more. So of course, the salices are pretty dangerous, especially up close. So we didn't really see it that much in the main game, but they will never stop attacking when they're close to you. They'll just keep swinging, forever. They never have any sort of cooldown on their attacks or anything like that, which makes them dangerous up close. I don't really like them in this level because they have a bunch of scripted jump points where basically you'll be aiming at him and he'll just fly from the ground up to one of these pillars because, you know, they're not programmed to just fluidly move around the environment. They have to follow the paths that say, you're allowed to jump here. Which is the case with most video game enemies, but it's just more noticeable here. Thankfully they don't move as fast backwards, or they don't move as fast when they're attacking as you do running backwards. We also have to watch out for that gate, as eventually they will try to break through, and that basically also acts like another spawn point. get a grenade in the right spot, it'll keep them from getting through there for a while, because they'll die in the fire.
It seems like the ammo boxes don't always give you the explosives you have, because that one just gave us sticky grenades, which we're missing from the main game, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, because they're in the spot where throwing knives would be. Uh, they're like the ones in the first game. It's just a grenade covered in nails that will stick into an enemy. Kind of dangerous with the Salus because they will uh, run up and explode on you. We've also got some of the psychic missiles here. The uh, will attack you with sonar blasts that slow you down. I guess these are the winged missiles. Not too bad by themselves, but of course, being slowed down when you're trying to get away from a Nasalis is pretty dangerous. Also, there are these stinky green ones that will run and attack faster. Please reload. Nope. That's the end of us. And then you get to do the whole thing over again. And over again. And over again. We've added a new makeshift weapon to the arsenal. You might want to take a look at it. Your next enemy is a new form of life. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the tower pack. It just keeps going like this. Or as commoners call it, a Nosalis. The next now mission after this is also a Nosalis. And, uh, eventually you'll fight Nazis as well. Darkness. You know, heavy well, soldiers and stuff like that. Explain, really. You'll need your torch, though, that's for sure. There's a very limited selection, if I remember correctly, though, of enemies. Uh, you know, none of the special stuff. No demons or shrimp or anything like that. Actually, there might be one level where you fight shrimp and Nasalis. I didn't really play this more than once, so I don't really remember. Anyhow, that's the tower pack. It was a, a pretty disappointing part of the DLC, I think, in the general reception for it. But, uh, yeah, I guess the problem is Metro does not really have the kind of gunplay that holds, you know, a horde mode, an XYZ thing there. I mean, apparently the reason they made this is because they thought the main game didn't show off the improved gunplay from the first game as well as it could, so they made a shooting-centric sort of DLC, but it just kind of feels disappointing, you know? It's not really fun to play through. Anyhow, that's the tower pack. Next time we'll move on to, uh, uh, let's see, I don't actually remember which one's next. I believe it is the spider lair. Or at least, the spider lair, developer lair, <laughs> developer lair. The spider lair slash developer pack. Um, also, uh, as these were released in kind of four chunks, the tower pack was a one chunk by itself, which is pretty disappointing. Because, you know, like, Heavy Squad, Shatria, and Sniper Team were the first pack. And then there was the tower pack, and then Spider Lair and Developer Pack came together, and then Pablo, Cam, and Anna were the last one. Developer pack is, uh... Well, I mean, I, I guess it's even less of a... sort of... structured player pack, like the tower pack is. But Spider Lair is a proper level. And we'll do that next.
Until then, I've been Shadefire, this is Metro Last Light, and I'll see you with some more DLC. Until then, you folks all take care.